They say graffiti is the poetry of our time. Just what we need. More lame poetry. Look, Sam. It's another one of the soda poppers. Wow, what are the odds? Say there, soda man. Oh, you made me mess up. Now I have to start all over. Specs, it's you! Wow, an actual celebrity vandalizing our neighborhood. This is great! Boy, you sure were a famous, oddly underdeveloped teen celebrity at one time. I'm still famous. Are you? Um, like a million point one times more famous than you. Well, we're really more known in the 18 to 34 year old repeat criminal demographic. Say, how about an autograph for my pal? You can sign my butt! Make it out to Squinky! I don't sign butts anymore. People get ticklish and they move and it gets all messed up. I'll risk it. Sorry, I can't stop painting. This has to be perfect. What was that catchphrase you used to say on your show? It was like, you messed me up, or something like that. <sighs> you made me mess up, which you just did. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah. So, Specs, what are you up to these days? Any new projects? Yes, I have a new light in my life, and his name is Brady Culture. He's the genius behind the Ibo Ocular Fitness Program. You really should try one of his videos. Ibo sounds like an electronic archery toy. Ibo is the truly visionary ocular fitness program. Try the video today. Sounds fascinating, but enough about that. You can never get enough of Brady Culture's Ibo. Didn't I see you on an episode of Celebrity Slap Fight? I was desperate. I was heavy into three ring binders at the time and I needed the money. You got your clock cleaned by that lady from Old and In the Way. Never saw that walker coming. Well, that's nice. Tell me something about that trendy modern street art you're perpetrating. What about it? How did you select your subject matter? He looks like a fried egg. It's Brady Culture. He's the genius behind the Ibo Ocular Fitness Program. You really should try one of his videos. I'd rather try a fried egg. Sounds fascinating, but enough about that. You can never get enough of Brady Culture's Ibo. Is this art or is it advertising? I, I, I'm not. Is there really any difference? Good point, little buddy. Do you live to paint, or do you paint to live? I don't know why I do it. I just have to paint. Did you take lessons to learn how to do that? No, it just came to me one morning. This morning, in fact. Are you aware that vandalism is illegal? And worse, unoriginal. We like to punish people who do it who aren't us. How could this be vandalism? Everyone loves Brady culture. Is the paint supposed to go outside the lines like that? What? No! Where? <laughs> I'm just pulling your dwarfish leg, my friend. Don't do that! Well, we'll leave you to it. But you have to agree to paint me next! Sorry, I only paint Brady culture. Where are we going, Sam? Let's go cruise for lawbreakers, Max. Goody! By the way, Sam, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I may have accidentally chewed through our brake lines. No, I don't think you did mention that. I guess we'll just have to slow down by violently rear-ending other motorists. Already planning on it, little buddy. Attention, fellow drivers. If for any reason we need to address you, we'll indicate it simply by crashing into the back of your vehicle. Thank you.
Take the wheel, little buddy. With pleasure. Please accept my condolences for your taillight. This is your first and final warning. Pull over or die. Hello, we're freelance police. And you're not. Ergo, we call the shots around here. Oh, why did you stop me? Your taillight's busted. But you're the ones who broke it! Your point being... Hmm, what's the fine for a broken taillight? Why, isn't it $10,000? What? Are you crazy? Uh, okay, uh, one moment. Allow me to confer with my legal counsel. Alright, my attorney advised me to pay the fine. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have some accounting. Thanks, sucker! Hey, a can of spray paint, and it's not even empty. Looks like there's going to be a lawnmower show. Great! I love riding mowers! They're like golf carts with teeth! This could use a little improvement. It up. Oh, now I've got to fix it, Brain Freeze. Hello. Hey, Bosco. Hey, you just going to leave him there? Uh... You know, we did put the kibosh on that whole terrorist operation, so... How about some free stuff? Is that why you did this? For free stuff? Was this all a part of the plot? Yes, a labyrinth and scheme in which we paid off a former child star to deliver videos to your store just so that we could knock him out via your own security system and claim an undeserved reward. So you admit it? Conspiracy humor may be lost on this crowd. We want to buy something. What do you got your eye on? Nothing for us right now. Okay. See you later, Bosco. Remember, we never had this conversation. What conversation? The conversation we just had. No, see, he was just acting like he'd already forgotten the conversation. What conversation? Oh, brother. We got your tear gas money right here. Really? All right, here you go. One tear gas grenade launcher. This is a salad shooter filled with onions. But it works. Trust me, trust me. Now put that away before someone gets hurt. What do you mean? The 10000 just covered the cost of materials, you know. Oh, I'm sure. It's okay, everybody. I'm all right. This could use a little improvement. What are you doing? Don't mess with my painting! Now I've got to fix it all up.
Can you believe we get paid for this? I love this country. You made me mess up. <laughs> now this is quality television. Except, hold on. My evil plan is in jeopardy. Who dares to oppose me? Hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> better, better. Well, we've admired our handiwork long enough. Maybe just one more second. Okay, let's go. Okay, Max, ready for that ocular workout? No, stop! We don't have any popcorn. Sweet alligator dentures soaking in formaldehyde. That was close. Quick, before it starts. Hello, I'm Brady Culture. You may remember me from Culture's Clubhouse, the massive worldwide television hit that ran for six episodes in 1970. <clears throat> what you are about to see will change your life forever. So watch closely. Now listen up, you tasteless Philistines! You love me. You adore me. You want to name all your children after me. I love you. I adore you. I want to name all my children after you. Sam, look! Ocular fitness, my eye. That videotape hypnotized Jimmy Two Teeth. I think I like him better this way. We've got to find this Brady culture and stop him before he hypnotizes every consumer of cheap self-help videos. Ooh, can I have his hair when we're done? Only if you keep it on a leash. Yoo-hoo! Tiny hoodlums! On this week's edition of Oh, Is He Still Alive? We look at the stars of the 1970s television hit, The Soda Poppers. I love shows that destroy all our cherished delusions about the stars we once loved. During the Soda Poppers' heyday, young Spex was the role model for obsessive neat freaks all over the globe. Ticker tape free, ticker tape parades were thrown in honor of the Soda Popper who never missed a spot. Backstage though, things were quite a bit dirtier. Speck's obsession with perfection caused massive delays in shooting and infuriated co-workers. He famously demanded over 11,000 retakes of the line, you made me mess up, made all the more annoying because of his tendency to repeat the line immediately after reading it. Following the show, Spex was rarely seen in public, although he did make one ill-fated venture into celebrity tag team mud wrestling, getting pinned in a record three seconds as he desperately tried to wipe down the ring with a dish rag. The meltdown utterly enraged his tag team partner and good friend, the dog from My Mother the Dog, who stormed out of the arena without a word. They haven't spoken since. Coming up next, the soda popper who couldn't always keep it in. Who could ever forget Wizzer and his hilarious bathroom breaks? His time out for number one adorned lunchboxes all over the nation for the better part of the 70s. Behind the scenes, though, Wizard's bladder problems were no laughing matter. The writers learned early on never to give Wizard the only existing copy of the script. On the set, they even had a term for a script that needed to be redone. It's been whizzed. Oh, that Wizard! He just charred my little pants off from day one. You don't even wear pants. Sure, not anymore. Four years after the soda poppers went off the air, Wizard desperately fought his addiction to designer bottled water, a war he would ultimately lose. The problem came to a climax one evening during a formal dinner at a posh Manhattan restaurant. Visibly loaded with water, Wizard publicly was unable to hold it in, unable to hold it in all over the floor, most of the tablecloth, and even ironically the four foot tall ice sculpture of himself created specifically for the occasion. Coming up next, the soda popper known for a really big part of his anatomy. Audiences all over the world fell in love with Peepers and his cute big eyes. On the set though, Peepers was not quite so beloved. 
While his high-pitched voice was a hit with audiences, it reportedly drove a number of his co-workers to alcoholism. Eventually, the show's director stopped bringing peepers back in to loop missing dialogue, getting the needed lines simply by scraping his fingernails over a chalkboard. I never noticed the difference. Even after the show left the airwaves, Peeper's I Can See You warmed the hearts of all who heard it. All that is, except apparently the students of Our Lady of Butter Toast Girls' School. Peeper's tenure as the gym teacher for the prestigious Catholic school came to an abrupt end when his familiar catchphrase was taken the wrong way in the girls' locker room. And coming up next, the child star who never was. Few, if any, remember the show that the Soda Poppers replaced. Culture's Clubhouse, hailed as television for the sophisticated six to eight year old, fell victim to the Soda Popper juggernaut and was quickly scrapped. Its young star, Brady Culture, struggled to find work and acceptance in the wake of the show's cancellation. Unable to find another role, Brady dabbled in every religion, creed, and belief system he could find. Buddhism, Judaism, Pointillism, Scientology, Horsematology, Nerfmatology, Prismatology, and even Stinkmatology. But what ultimately became of Brady Culture? No one knows. Brady Culture's being lifted from obscurity by his former rivals? I think this qualifies as a baffling mystery, Sam. You may be right. Coming up next, we'll repeat everything you've just heard. <laughs> 